We can think of nucleophilic substitution as involving two key processes, leaving group departure and the formation of a bond between the nucleophile and the electrophilic atom, which is typically carbon. The precise mechanism of nucleophilic substitution depends on the order and the timing of these two events. They may occur simultaneously with the leaving group departing at the same time the nucleophile is forming a bond to the electrophilic atom, or they may occur in a stepwise fashion, with the leaving group departing with a pair of electrons first, generating a cationic intermediate that then undergoes formation of a bond with the nucleophile. These concerted and stepwise pathways are the two key mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution that we're going to discuss in this video. Let's begin with some key observations of nucleophilic substitution reactions. The first set of observations involves lithium methoxide, LiOCH3, as the nucleophile. The true nucleophile here is, of course, the methoxide anion. And what we find when using this molecule as the nucleophile is that the rate of substitution increases in the order tertiary, secondary, and primary. In other words, primary electrophiles are the most rapid, followed by secondary electrophiles and tertiary electrophiles, which are essentially unreactive in substitutions with OCH3-. In addition, the rate depends on the concentration of methoxide. And so graphically, we have that the slowest reaction, essentially no nucleophilic substitution, occurs when we have three alkyl groups bound to the electrophilic carbon. The rate goes up substantially when we only have two groups there, and the rate is fastest when we have only one group there, or we have a methyl halide. The rate when using this nucleophile depends on both the concentration of the electrophilic molecule and the concentration of the nucleophilic molecule. When methanol, the conjugate acid of methoxide, is used as the nucleophile, we find that the dependence of rate on substitution pattern is reversed with respect to the first case, and that the reaction rate is independent of the concentration of nucleophile. So here, the methyl halide substrate is essentially unreactive, with the rate increasing as we add alkyl groups to the electrophilic carbon. Additionally, the rate depends only on the concentration of alkyl halide. The nucleophile, methanol, in this reaction is zero order. What this means in a practical sense is that a molecule of methanol is not involved in the rate determining or rate limiting step. And of course, we could draw an analogous conclusion in the first set of reactions from the rate law, reasoning that because it appears in the rate law, methoxide must be somehow involved in the rate determining step. And so, as we just noted, these observed differences in kinetics point to differences in reaction mechanism. At the very least, the rate determining steps are different. The two possible mechanisms involve these two key steps that we discussed at the beginning of this video occurring either in a single step or concerted fashion. This is what we call SN2, and we're actually familiar with this already from previous discussions of the elementary steps. Or a stepwise mechanism involving leaving group departure followed by nucleophile coordination called SN1. And the 2 and the 1 get at the dependence of the rate law on concentration, whether it involves two species or only one. Bimolecular substitution occurs when methoxide is used as the nucleophile. You may recognize these curved arrows as those associated with the SN2 elementary step. And in this case, substitution and leaving group departure happen simultaneously, or what we might call a concerted fashion. Given that this is the only step of the reaction and that both molecules, the nucleophile and electrophile, are involved, it's unsurprising that the rate here depends on both the concentrations of electrophile and nucleophile. In the unimolecular substitution mechanism called SN1, leaving group departure occurs before coordination of the nucleophile. And often, because the nucleophile is weak, a final proton transfer step occurs, and that's what we're seeing here. In the first step, the leaving group departs with a pair of electrons, and this is an example of a D sub N step. A synonym for leaving group departure, if you like, is dissociation of a nucleophuge from the substrate molecule. This generates a carbocation intermediate, which is intercepted by the nucleophile, here it's methanol, in an A sub N elementary step. So notice that D sub N followed by A sub N accomplishes the same overall transformation as SN2 up here. The nucleophile, methanol, has displaced the leaving group, bromide. This positively charged intermediate is then rendered neutral via proton transfer to another nucleophile molecule, and this generally occurs in basic workup, giving us the neutral product of nucleophilic substitution here. And the elementary step here, which involves transferring a proton to 
some base, using the nucleophile as a base is common in this context, is just an example of proton transfer. The byproducts of this stepwise process are, again, the conjugate base of the leaving group, Br-, and also the conjugate acid of the nucleophile. And in SN1 reactions, the nucleophile is commonly used as solvent, so that generating small amounts of the conjugate acid of the nucleophile isn't a big deal. Now that we've laid out the elementary steps involved in each of these mechanisms, a few unanswered questions remain. One is about the stereochemistry at the electrophilic carbon. How does the mechanism affect the stereochemical outcome when we're creating or transforming a stereocenter? Another simpler question is about the tendency of a substrate to undergo SN1 versus SN2. We've seen the dependence on the nucleophile, but how does the electrophilic substrate come into play, and why do we see this inversion in preference, where the SN2 reaction prefers less substituted electrophiles, while the SN1 reaction prefers more substituted electrophiles? These questions are going to be answered in the next couple of videos.